welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. We are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. I am Queen Deborah. I'm Queen Emily. And you can find our show notes on down below, actually, in the down bar. But you can find linked show notes, show notes with links in them, <laughs> uh, in on our website on meanwhileatthecastle.com, which there is a link to that below. If that makes sense. Oh. You can find us places <laughs> with things and Look stuff. down below. There's information <laughs> down there that will tell you where to go if you can't find what you need. Um, let's see. We also have a Ravelry group, meanwhile, at the castle where we host giveaways, have some different type of chatter threads. And we are coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. And it is April 18th, 2018. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are just happy to be here and happy yep. to have you join us. It's been a few weeks, I think three weeks since our last our last podcast. I was going to say our last confession. Well, no, there's, I'm trying to remember who says that. It's been so many weeks since my last confession. That's how it sounds. I'm trying to remember, but she's But so I don't want to make light of things for people it. either. But yeah. It's true. It's, it's true. Yeah. Anyways, so it's been a very lovely time for me. How are yes. things going for you? Em? Good. Good. Busy and good. Like the good kind of busy, yeah, you know. Yeah. We've got all of our kids are doing shows right now. Yep. Except for my youngest. She's the only one of our well, my oldest obviously. He's off in, you know, Ukraine right now, but my three or my two and your three are, are all in in different different three different shows between yeah. the, the <laughs> five of them. Six how many kids do we have? Five Between that the, are doing the show. Yes. <laughs> Let me take off my shoes if we need to count it very high. <laughs> so your girls are in Peter Pan. Yep. I posted, um, no, well, in my personal Instagram account, a picture of my daughter's makeup. I'll post that here. She is going to be a lion in Peter Pan. She looks and awesome. She does look fabulous. Mm -hmm. She looks fabulous. And my middle daughter is an Indian and I have a picture of just her makeup kind of just a really quick snapshot mm -hmm. um, by Indian that is, in Peter Pan it's a Native American and it is not politically correct we no. will say it okay. wasn't in the book it's not in the musical either so and then my youngest is a lost boy and she would not allow me to take pictures because as the girliest girl that ever did girl she's a lost <laughs> boy and has to have torn uh, clothes that are made to look dirty and hair all messed up and she just was devastated when she saw the costume. I bet she's adorable. And she will not wear it to the play, you know, to the theater. She'll only go there, change into it, oh. and then change out of it and come home because she's not happy about it. But she's really, really cute in it. She does a good job. That's that's really fun. And your your now, my oldest daughter Aria is in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and she is playing one of the wives of one of the sons, and um, that actually both of those shows open this weekend. Yep, both on Friday. Mm -hmm. Um, Aria's opens tomorrow Thursday. Th opens that's Thursday. right. We're gonna go see it then. Yeah, and then your girls on Friday, and then your girls show is two weeks. It's like oh. two and a half weeks of shows uh -huh. but they have a couple of days off here and there so they have something like yeah. seven shows total yeah aria is, is only four shows so that's nice yeah. and then isaac my 13 year old is in taming of the shrew and he is playing petruchio the lover which is <laughs> so funny it's awesome he does such a good job He's been running his lines every day, and um, Abby, my 10-year-old, has been helping him run lines. So she's got half of them memorized, too, and they're just so funny because they're constantly quoting it. So that's, that's, what, that one is the first weekend in May. That's so. what I love. Our, so our Commonwealth, which is our kind of our homeschool community here, um, we do a Shakespeare play every year, and we've mm -hmm. talked about it before with um, our kids being in that, but... What I love is that when, when we do that, our whole families, or oh, yeah. all the family gets involved in it and helping them learn lines. And so everybody memorizes yes, lines. Yes, everybody does. And how can you go wrong memorizing Shakespeare? Well, most of Shakespeare. <laughs> most of, some of Shakespeare. We'll say some of Shakespeare. <laughs> some of Shakespeare. Uh, I would like to fun. say his quote that thinking makes it so is not true. <laughs> hmm. Maybe. 
We've had a lot of conversations <laughs> about that lately, but just thinking something doesn't mean... No, you that... have to work it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. Oh, it's fun. It's really fun. It's so fun to see them do hard things and, you know, just... Just thrive in it. I mean, Aria was really stressed because first she didn't get the part she wanted. Mm -hmm. She really, really, really wanted to be the narrator. And she has the voice for it, um, but not a lot of experience. And and so I think that that was part of what kind of held her back a little bit there. But um, so she wasn't too happy about this part. And then it's so much dancing. Oh, and she yeah. never has thought of herself as somebody who could dance. But the cool thing has been she's been learning it and just doing so well so it's been a really great experience for I'm a her. dancer I do interpretive dancing <laughs> is it kind of like Elaine on Seinfeld that kind of interpretive yes, dance well <laughs> in my mind I am a beautiful me too dancer. <laughs> that's where it stays and thinking doesn't make it so, <laughs> so. see there you go <laughs> yeah uh, I'm almost done with my motorhome remodel it's looking fabulous, and we are just about ready to start taking our first adventures out in it. To That's so fun. It, we're going to have a great time with that. I'm trying to think what else has been happening in life. There's been a lot of things happening. So, so. Um, my oldest daughter, Aria, is planning on going on a mission for our church. And the way that that works is you just kind of say, I want to do it, and you go through like an application process, and then you wait and you receive an assignment of where you get to go. And so she is this close to being done with the application thing, and then we get to wait probably in the next couple weeks, we'll be finding out where she'll be going on her mission, and she'll spend about, she'll, the, she'll spend 18 months, um, doing that and serving a mission. So and that's your really exciting. And Ethan, we've talked yep. about, is... He comes home in 69 days. Almost done with his mission. Yeah, so his is two Ukraine. years, and he's been in Ukraine. Um, he's actually been in a couple of different places. But anyway, he's spent most of his time in Ukraine. So he, right now he's in a little town called Venetia. Well, a little town. I don't think it's terribly little. But it's, like, established in the 1300s. So lots of history there. And he just loves it so much there. And... He'll be coming home in June, so that's very exciting. That is. That's fun. I think that's that all the news. Yeah, well, there's always lots of news, but I can't remember more than what happened like two hours ago, so. <laughs> oh, my Abby <laughs> turned 10. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so fun. My baby is 10. My youngest is turning 11 this week. Yes, she so. is. They're not so little anymore. I know. In fact, both Isaac and Abby today, as we were getting ready to come over to Deborah's today, they were just showing me how they're tall enough to do this and they're tall enough to do that. Things they didn't realize they were tall enough to do before. And I was just like, stop. stop. I remember <laughs> when my youngest one, Nadia, um, I was, I would cook bacon and that's how she woke up because bacon was her favorite and she could only <laughs> say bacon. It was bacon. You know, she'd come upstairs with this, like, bacon, I want to eat. And she couldn't see over the counter. She was so tiny that all she could do was just reach and try to feel. And she was trying to find the bacon. And I just remember, like, that so clearly. And I see her walk by, and, you know, she's way taller than the counter. It's just yeah. strange to... To think that, but I'm also happy. Crazy. I know it is wonderful too. Independence is also lovely. It's a beautiful thing. Lovely. Yes. Well, it's just so cool to see how smart they are and fun and the connections they make and yep, that that's good stuff. It is. Alrighty. Right. Hey, we have some winners to announce. Yes, we have two giveaways today. All right, our first one, Emily. All right, so we closed up our my first socks knit along. And um, that was just really, really fun. I know that there are more people, too, that knit socks for their first time mm -hmm. that didn't come and enter the, the giveaway. But um, we had a great time doing the tutorial and just connecting with people over that. So our winner is Cicelou on Ravelry. Yay. That's Devette in Michigan. And Devet knit her socks out of one of my yarns in the garden colorway. So that was really wonderful. And they turned out so pretty. And she also, she didn't just knit that pair of socks. She knit the first sock, I think, almost completely. Mm -hmm. And then frogged the whole thing and then started again. 
Because she, she wanted the fit. So yeah, because the yeah. fit wasn't quite right. And so I think a lot of the times we'd get frustrated with that without much work, and, you know, mm -hmm. and just be like, forget it. But she just kept going and persevered, yeah, and did. now she's a sock knitter. Um, yes, and she's. I think she said she started on another pair, too. That's great. We had quite mm -hmm. a few people that had knit multiple pairs. So, well so done. So, what is it that she's winning? So, Devette is winning a skein of my yarn, and this is what she's winning. This. I lied. That's not the one you're winning. I was going to say, I don't think This so. is the one she's winning. Devette is winning one of my new colorways. This is called Harriet Smith, and this is from my Emma collection, and I'll show more about that later. And a yarn, or excuse me, Devette, any sock pattern of your choice on Ravelry. So you find the sock pattern that you are interested in, and um, since I'm going to be sending you this yarn, you can just contact me and let me know. And then Deborah will be gifting you that sock pattern and I will be sending you this yarn. So get in touch with me, Devette, through Ravelry and send me your address and what sock pattern you would like. All right. Okay. All right. We also have another giveaway that we announced um, last week. It was for the Chic Sheep yarn that we did a review for. Mm -hmm. And our winner is Angelic Embers. She is Nicole from New Jersey. And the question was that you were to answer is what is your favorite one skein project to knit? And she said her favorite, is, she likes cowls or socks. So you get the skein of yarn and I will also be gifting you my latest cowl pattern, which is called Love Entwined. And so get in touch with me. You can get in touch with me on Ravelry or on Instagram. Send me a message and I will send out the, the yarn and the pattern to you. So congratulations to our winners. That's super fun. And we have lots of, we have lots of fun things to talk uh, about today. We have lots of fun things to talk about. So we better get started I on know. it instead of chattering all day long <laughs> like I can do. Okay. So wait, I like chattering all day long. Yes. But that's the problem, isn't it? Well, we already talked about how my phone battery is pretty pathetic. <laughs> and so that limits how much time we can chatter on. <laughs> that's how much so. time we can record. Okay. So, yes. first of all. So the lovely, oh, so lovely, oh, so delightful oh. Amy from Little Tayloress sent us these gorgeous bags. Look at what? those. They Love come it. with her cute little label and a progress keeper that matches. These are her Liberty Print bags. I love it. Love, love Everything it. she makes is lovely and has kind of that pretty vintage flair. I, uh, I can't wait to. I, love, I need to fill this with a project. I love what you're using for the drawstring. Yeah. That is really cute. Those are fun. Very cute. So pretty. If you don't watch Amy on Little, little Taylor S on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You should go check it out. Yes. She is just has such a beautiful style um, and she's soothing to listen to unlike my nasally voice that you're listening to now. <laughs> I'm not trying to compare. I'm just different. <laughs> but she's very soothing. <laughs> she is and she's very positive which yes. I love. She's a positive and <laughs> just delightful person she and I don't know a lot of sewing and yes. drafting of patterns and it's fun to watch yes about that lots of fun things um I think she's doing a what was it Bonding's, meadow no oh. the, the meadow flowers mm -hmm. I'm hoping I'm saying that right Amy meadow flowers sock yarn club I would go check that out because her colors are gorgeous 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 all right, so let's see. Oh, I had another bag. One. Yes, I didn't mm -hmm. have a chance to show this last time because we just were chatting forever. <laughs> but I got this lovely bag from Random Fandom Bags, and I'm sure that everybody has seen her beautiful bags. Here's the back. Owls. That's and she so has cute. this cute little tea bag um, notions pouch that attaches to the side that you can detach. And it has this really neat front view panel. And in here, I'm storing yarns that I'm using for my next design mm. patterns, design work that I have in mind. So That's so cute. This is, it's just fun. I also like every time there's a handle because that's how I store my bags. Is that's I really cute, the RFB for random yep. fandom bags. 
little tea bag. That's so nice just adorable. One. Yeah. So that one was really fun. So she's on oh, Instagram fun. and on Etsy, so you can go check her out. She always has a lot of really fun stuff. And she sells her little notions pouches separately from the bags as well if you want oh, to nice. just do that. And she has different sizes of bags. That is really cute. Super cute. Fun let's, stuff. Let's talk about some finished objects. Yay! All right, let's see. I have I have two. I have one and then a shared one. Okay. So you go first. All right. Well, the first finished object, it has taken me far too long. <laughs> I've shown it several times here, but I'm happy to be done with this beautiful, beautiful project. Um, I am knitting, or I finished knitting. You could say it's the Skedaddle Sock by Lena Gerald, but in all reality, I modified it so much that I pretty much took the back stitch pattern mm. and put that along the back, and then I used Emily's Candy Floss Sock um, cuff, because I always like that on there. And so here's my finished socks. They're la, so la, la. cute. The yarn is by Little Taylor S. Amy, and it is um, all the Christmas candy, and it's got Stellina in it, which is really fun, and I did a little bit longer of the contrasting color mm. for the toe before I began the decreases. I actually did that on kind of on accident because I wanted to show that on our sock knit along how to switch your colors out and I thought it was ready and I wasn't quite but I really like it actually. I like so, that too. Gives um, it a little bit more of the color. So I wanted to show you the pattern, the stitch pattern. Because it's on the back of the leg it doesn't work so well on the sock blocker. So that's the pattern. That's cute. This is the portion that I took from the skedaddle sock pattern, just this part right here. And it's just this little mini cable pattern that's really quite simple. Uh, that's pretty. I keep saying it, just go do cables if you're wanting to do something a little bit different because they're not too hard. They are. I mean, you know, this one's a simple cable. It's not, it's not a traveling cable and it mm -hmm. doesn't have a million multiple cables part of it so anyways but it's fun because you can get a really fun like kind of wow effect that's really mm -hmm. not difficult so that's I think I figured out this is my second pair of socks for the year last year I was on a roll with socks this year yeah. not so much but that's okay. I think I've only knit three three pair of socks so yeah far, so I just have a different focus of knitting this year yep speaking of socks I finished my socks with Cheshire's Grin from my Alice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland colorway. And talk about vanilla. This is as vanilla as it gets. Two by two rib, very, very simple heel flap, no slip stitches or anything. Rounded wedge toe and fun bright colors. I just love them. And I'm really excited to wear them now because I've been saving them, thinking we to were going to podcast. I mean, I finished them quite a, you know, yeah. like <clears throat> maybe a week after we podcast last. So for the last two weeks, I'm like, I want to put those on. That's what I've been doing with them. But my... they're so fun and bright. I love it. I like that Jules on So Sweet Violet has been sharing mm -hmm. a different pair of socks that she's knit every day this month. Yeah. Hers are all so fun and cheerful. They Mine are. are so random, like my color choices and things. Mine there. too. And that's that's just fine. That's kind of my personality is random. <laughs> but I was just thinking, it would be nice to look into her drawer of socks because I'm sure that it all looks like it's just meant to go together and it just would be this lovely ray of sunshine just to open up that drawer and see. But <laughs> Well, for a long time, I would not put my favorite yarns into socks. Because I just thought, well, I want it to be, I would want to save it for like a shawl or a scarf or something I was wearing up by my face. But there's only so many shawls and scarves I can wear compared to how many socks mm -hmm. I can wear. And I finally just got over myself and was like, no, knit my favorite yarns into socks. So and I don't like wearing regular store-bought socks anymore. I, so I don't think I, have more. I think I wore a pair of store-bought socks when we went hiking um, in St. George. And that's the only time in maybe the last two years. <laughs> I don't have quite enough that I would say enough for me to wear only hand knit socks, especially because I need a lot more shorty socks. Mm -hmm. I wear socks constantly 
Right. So, because I love to wear socks all the time. You don't I quite don't. as much no. as I do. Um, we had a viewer ask how hand knit socks hold up compared to socks from the store. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good question. Yes. What would you say? About I would that? say make sure it has nylon in it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there are people who say that you can use sock yarn with no nylon if it's like really robust, but I have not had good success with that. Um, I have socks that I've knit with, you know, a sock yarn that's like a 7525 merino nylon. Um, and they have held up beautifully over a couple of years. And um, I mean, I don't just wear them. I mean, I wear them in my shoes, in my boots, you know, out walking, whatever. Not hiking, I have a, I won't, but you know, I don't do that a lot. <laughs> So, um, anyway, I've had great success with them. The ones that have, I've gotten holes in have not had hot nylon or nylon in them, um, or have been abused somehow. So like I had a, a pair of shoes that had Velcro on them. They were my ugly brown shoes. That's what the actual official name is. I would say <laughs> to my kids, could you go grab my ugly brown shoes? <laughs> anyway. But they had some Velcro and they would catch in this one spot. Um, so I did have wear in that one spot. But just from regular wear, I haven't had problems unless there was no nylon mm -hmm. in them. And I have my first pair of socks is a pair that you knit, mm -hmm. which I think was one of your first pair of socks that you knit. Yeah, it was and like I think my second or third. It was really early on. Yeah, and at that time, you didn't know about sock yarn, like the, mm -hmm. the types of yarns mm -hmm. to use. So you used a single ply. But it did have nylon in it. And. But it was single they ply. They have held up beautifully. Mm -hmm. I've worn them a lot. And they have held up beautifully. But I think the most important factor beyond um, having the nylon content is your gauge. If mm, you're knitting mm -hmm. at a really loose gauge, yeah. then the fibers are going to shift and move to move around yeah. a lot more. They're not tight and held together, and that friction is going to cause wear. And so mm. you want to have a tighter gauge. If you have a loose gauge, it's nice and cozy for you know bed socks or that kind of thing, but they're not going to hold up That's as well. So true. And to have the right amount of negative ease because mm -hmm. negative eaves holds it on your foot properly so it's not gonna shift in your shoe as you're, every time mm -hmm. you take a step, it's not moving down and up and down, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so we did talk about that in our um, sock knit along videos. At yeah. least I talked about that. Yeah, we did. Okay. I mean, the basic idea, just to recap really quickly, is you want, what is it, about nine stitches per inch, we had eight, eight to eight, nine? Eight, about eight stitches per inch, that's the average. Mm -hmm. And you want about 10% negative ease, um, both in width, like circumference, and, and mm -hmm. in length. Length so, of the foot. Yeah, so when you see a sock pattern and it only gives you a, like a stitch count, if it says it's like a medium sock, mm -hmm. <laughs> that may just mean like for the length. A lot of times they tell you what size foot, and that's just right. the length. But that's not really as... That, that's only part of the equation. You need to make sure a round also yep. is, is, uh, has a 10% negative ease. That's, mm -hmm. in our opinion, what we have discovered yep. wearing socks. So Knitting and wearing socks. Knitting and wearing socks. Yep. <laughs> but I also, I just love socks. I have a bajillion and a half. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> of socks in my house. No wonder and you need a motorhome. Yes. <laughs> so you can move out and your socks can live there. <laughs> yeah. But um, my, I still have a few favorite pairs that are just mm -hmm. nice and soft and cushy. And, but I actually go through them so fast. I have yeah. to replace them every season. Like every summer, my summer socks I have to replace. And every winter I have to replace. Every winter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty hard on mine. But yeah. my hand knit socks. I have yet to repair anything on mine. I have. I've, I've, um, I had one pair of socks, again, no nylon in that pair of socks I had to patch for me. I had a pair for my daughter, Aria, and she's actually gone through them multiple times to the point where I'm just not, I'm told her there's not really any point because I repair one spot and then pretty soon the next spot. It's just the yarn. Oh, okay. Um, and then there's that. I haven't even repaired them yet, but I used... Malabrigo sock. There's a Malabrigo sock twist and a Malabrigo sock. Malabrigo sock, I hope I'm saying this right, 
is the one that's just 100% superwash merino. Malabrigo sock twist has nylon. Check that, it might be the other way around, but one of those, I used the one that didn't have nylon in um, and right through them, problems right it. through them, so. And Amber Lindemann on Yarn Hoarder, mm -hmm. one of her episodes, she shares how her family socks have held up over the years, yeah. so that's really good. You'd have to go search through to find, but mm -hmm. she is such a wealth of information. Especially so. about socks. Yeah, so she I would go check that out. Of socks. All right, so let's see. Next finished object, I have a little pair of baby socks that I gave away to our friend Courtney. She is having a little boy, and I was going to a baby shower, and I was realizing her baby is going to be born in the summer. And what in the world do they need hand knit in the summer? But I can't go to my knitting group for a baby shower <laughs> no. with something without something hand knit. <laughs> I almost bought this baby hat that was knit, and I was like, "No, that would be just shameful." It's travesty. <laughs> so, anyways, so I knit some little socks. Um, I used a knit picks, just a scrap that I used for my husband's yarn, and um, another mini that I had. This is kind of a reddish orange color because I bought this little outfit that was gray and white striped and on the little bum it had a little animal face with this color it was so That's cute fun. so um I'll put a picture up right here so you can see the little tiny socks I put a quarter next to it so if you're in the U.S. that's just you'll know what size that means so you can kind of get the size of socks so that's not like a huge accomplishment to knit a bear, pair of baby socks but they're adorable but they're so cute oh and i was going to tell you how i knit what the what the recipe was i cast on 36 stitches i knit 10 rounds for the cuff i knit 18 rounds after that for the leg and plain stocking knit and then i did the heel flap and picked up eight eight slip stitches along the side. Oh, never mind. The heel flap, I did 16 rows. So eight slip stitches. Mm -hmm. Then I did nine, picked up nine stitches on both sides. And after I decreased, I did 24 rows and decreased every row for the toe until six stitches remained. If you could follow that, good job. But the <laughs> details will be in my Ravelry um, page so that you can project page so you can see that nice and I think my estimate would be that that's probably about a three month size that's fun. sock so I haven't had any teeny baby socks that would be fun so there's my second More finished for object the baby's basket I know I kind of want to knit a whole bunch of baby socks because they're Cause just really fun. fun and cute knitting baby pieces <laughs> <is> fun <laughs> although I realize I have like only one or two boy things. I need to knit some little boy things. That was the problem is that I have all girls, all my yarn is really girly and now everybody's having boys and I don't have anything in on hand in my stash to knit for boys. So that was a challenge. I've got to I gotta work on that stash. Sorry. I really need to work on my like DK and worsted stash. That's what I need to I can help you out with that. You can help <laughs> I, I know a dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I went to take um, a big stock of yarn into Knit and Pretty, uh -huh. and I walked in, and they're like, "It's the dealer." <laughs> oh, I want the yarn that you just took there. Oh, oh, you guys, so pretty. It's so pretty. I mean, it's only going to be helpful to local people here, but um, local yarn store day is Saturday, which is the twenty first. Yeah, the twenty first, and. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but Casapinka has come out with a local yarn shawl. and Local she's, yarn store shawl, right? I thought she just called it the local yarn shawl, but I, 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 I could be wrong. So um, anyway, you can get that at your local yarn stores on Saturday the 21st. Um, but I did a custom dye order for... For Lauren and it's her sixth anniversary the shop sixth anniversary That's so it's so pretty I, I will love be going it. there to get the yarn it's so pretty for sure absolutely yeah she's got it hidden in the back for right now it'll be out on Saturday <laughs> <laughs> I really need you to stop dying yarn you need Please to stop, stop dying. No, I can't help it. <laughs> Every time she posts, I'm like, Emily, I need a skein of that. I need a skein of that. I need a skein. You've exercised great restraint. I, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I only have like 
six gain of yours. So I'm feeling, yeah. I'm feeling pretty good. Good job. But that's actually I, about all I have of mine. I have too. on hold some more. So. <laughs> Uh, all no. right, so our last finished object. Actually, I forgot one, oh, but we're gonna have to insert a picture for that too. It's my love and twined cowl oh, because yes. I was binding it off yeah. during our last episode, and so I, then I blocked it. I didn't bring it, but um, we'll insert a picture of the love and twined cowl, and so it's really fun. It was really, it was a really fun knit. Thanks, Sam. And it's Thanks. a beautiful pattern. Oh yeah, I released the pattern since yeah our last <gasps> yeah. Yeah, I did. I should, I, I'm going to give you an update on that. Yes. So in the first 24 hours, I had, I think like 90 sales on that. That blew me away. It's I could not believe how many of you were interested in the pattern. So thank you so much. That was just really, really sweet. So if you want to see the pattern, you can go to my Ravelry page. There's information in mm -hmm. the links below. It's beautiful. So it's really, really pretty. So, so it's lovely. So I finished uh, that too. My test knitters, I just need to say, are superstars. They were fantastic. You can go see them on like the Ravelry, on the pattern projects mm -hmm. page. Yes. Mm -hmm. They did such a good job. I am so thankful. They made it just nice and painless. So thanks. That's great. All right. So All right. Next one. So this is a combined finished object, although it still has a few ends to be woven in. We should do that while we're sitting here. Where's my needles? I you should some. totally do that while we're sitting. <laughs> I'm working on. I'm working on this here. I say we. The royal we. Emily. Royal we. Emily should... weave in the ends. Remember how you're the queen. Royal we. No. <laughs> I'll weave in the ends, but not while we're doing this. Wait, the top. This one on the top. Okay. Yeah. So we have another scrappy bias. So okay, let's start on this end. Here we go. It's a long one, you guys. Ooh. Here we go. <laughs> it's fun to see the color progression. Isn't that fun? Woo! All the way to the end. You know what makes me laugh? What? You can totally see where I was knitting and then where Emily, uh -huh. not like in gauge, no. but a little bit in styles of color choices. Like, I don't we know. Go. We have some very similar. Where do you think that the dividing line is? Yep. Right there. <laughs> this is where I took over right here. Now this yep. kind of goes with, I mean, I think they all goes no, together. No, no, they all go together. But you can tell where it got brighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love it. Love it, love it. I'm going to wear it. You should. It looks fabulous. With this is a gift shirt. for a friend of ours. But she won't mind if I wear it for a few minutes, hopefully. There. Get your scent on it. It's kind of like, you know, you wear... It's a bonding <laughs> square. It's a, a bonding triangle. Oh, I should wear it for a bit. I'm going to make sure that I shower. It's so and... weird. <laughs> Put We're on clean. first. Oh my god. <laughs> if you come to watch us and you stick around, bless you. Mm -hmm. Bless you. <laughs> it's usually me that embarrasses Emily. <laughs> really? Yeah. I think I embarrass you a lot. Maybe not embarrass I'm me. I'm just, just embarrassed like... by myself most of the time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm using the camera like a mirror. I'm like, ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I like to tie the little ends in like a little knot. Deborah doesn't like that, but I do. They yeah, I don't. I, I tuck mine around so that it like hides both ends. I like rapid. the ends hanging down. Except for the <laughs> strings that haven't been woven in are dangerous. It's like, oh. <laughs> Take your eye out. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that reminds Okay, this reminds me. It is dangerous because my daughter um, in ballet last year... She got something in her eye, oh, and we had to go to the eye doctor multiple times in a week for them to try to find what it was. It was just so painful, and they finally were able to find it after the third attempt, and they pulled out something like five really long, clear, like, nylon filaments that were easily a foot long each that had wrapped around her eye as it had moved around, and it was from the wigs and things that they wore in the ballet, so I'm just thinking of like the the wool as you fling it around. If you get little fibers in your eye, they're impossible. I to think find. I've had dye in my eye before. Ugh. I mean, I wear like a mask and everything, and I usually that have my glasses really on. Painful. And I haven't seen it, but I've like been speckling yarn and then gone like, oh, what is that? And I've never found anything in there. Uh, but if I suddenly have like a big like purple splotch or something, you'll know what it and is. And then you're gonna have cancer and 
die. Oh my gosh, from that. <laughs> well, okay, we already call not. it dying Just yarn and like... dying your eyes. And my kids call it murdering yarn. Murdering yarn. Because I'm dying it. Yeah, uh, whatever. I don't want to joke about... I know. Blackness and things. We have family members that really suffer with that. Yes. Okay. We're going <laughs> okay, to move back to reality here. This is my reality. <laughs> okay. Works in progress. Works in progress. <laughs> uh, <laughs> give me a I minute. I told you I embarrass her constantly. Give me a minute. I didn't say it was embarrassing. <laughs> well, not Maybe. entirely. <laughs> I only have one work in progress. Okay. I've got a couple here. So you go first. Okay. First in this sweet bag that was a gift from so Sally. She's you, me, and Mabel on Instagram. She sent this to me for my birthday. That is adorable. It is cute. She also made a table runner out of Aww. this. Yeah, that was really fun. Um, and here, there's the ball band. I just needed to get that out. Okay, I am knitting the Raina shawl. And the Raina shawl is by Nora Lavola. Yes. So, I, I won't get into that. Never mind. Okay. Enough side <laughs> notes. Um, on our Marley, no, the, yeah, the Marley Bird giveaway, where we asked people what their favorite one skein mm -hmm. project was, um, Kaylin from Bewitched Fiber Company, she mentioned that she likes the Raina shawl. And I'm like, oh, I should look that one up. And I... Before I even got to that, I was on Pinterest and there was a thread or there was a, a pin for like a dozen one skein shawls and I was looking at that and I'm like, this shawl's really pretty and I went and looked it up and it was the Raina shawl. Perfect. So, it is a free pattern on Ravelry and it has over 7,000 projects on there. So it's a little popular. So I don't know why I didn't know about this beforehand, but thank you, Kaylin, for letting me know about it. So. I am knitting this out of the Tilting Planet Cosmic Cake colorway. I'm going to show that for a minute more so you can see that. Um, and this is going to be a birthday present for my youngest daughter. That's so really let's cute. see. Let's try and hold it this way. I started this a week and a half ago and I am on the very, very last section right now. I love it. So she will be so happy because when I bought this yarn, I was thinking of her and she saw it and she just loved it. It's lovely yarn. She doesn't know I'm knitting this. Well, she sees it every now and again, but it's not even registering anymore. I'm just always knitting. So I try to not knit it when she's around, but sometimes she runs in the room and sees it and I put it away. But this one I'm knitting on a US size six needle. Um, rather than the four that's suggested in the pattern because I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more open and drapey. Oh yeah, for and sure. And it looks lovely. And let's see, a couple of things that about this shawl, which is really nice, is it has this garter section mm -hmm. and then it has this open kind of mesh section, this lace pattern and then garter and then lace and garter and then lace. So the garter section always stays constant at like eight garter ridges and then the mesh mesh section doubles each time. And so it kind of nice. looks nice that way, but you can change it up however you like. I ended the mesh section to, to like repeats short because I was worried I was gonna run out of yarn. And yeah. I wanted, even though the pattern says to end with just a short amount of mesh, I wanted it to remain constant where it ends with eight. So I had to or end a little bit early to make sure I had enough because I'm using a larger needle. So really this, fine. oh, and this cute progress keeper. I love this one. Now I'm trying to remember all of a sudden who sent that to me. I think that was Sally. No, it wasn't. Sorry. Sorry. That was also, that was with my, came with my random fandom bag that I showed earlier. That's really fun. And look how cute. I, I always stop after I do a little bit and I have to play with this and look at it because the colors match the shawl so perfectly. It's lovely. They and do. my daughter who loves unicorns, I feel like this is perfect for her. You kind of have to call it like the unicorn shawl when you get it to so. her. So go get the Raina shawl. It's free. It's easy. It's addictive. I like that. I'm pretty sure I'm casting that on like right away. Yeah. If I didn't have like four bajillion, I like bajillion apparently, um, 
projects I want to make, I'd probably make dozens of these. Do you, is so it just a plain simple. bind off? Uh, I didn't get to that point yet. So I feel like if you did picos, it would be so cute. That's what I was actually thinking about yeah. doing. I was actually thinking about that. I don't know. I haven't got to that. I got to see how much yarn I have. But it needs to be done in the next two days, so. You could even bind it off in a contrast color in that hot pink. Ooh, I could if I had the hot pink, which I don't have. Hmm, I might know somebody who has <gasps> some hot pink. Wait! I have some left over of that. That would be really cute with the Pico binder. That would yes, be adorable. That would be. She would love it. Anyway, so I'm really proud of myself because just... I, since I picked this up, that's the only thing I've knit. Except for the baby socks. That's why I, I had to do the baby nice. socks. Nice. So I've been focusing on that. And my hands will get like stiff after a little bit of time, but they haven't really hurt from knitting, which is miraculous. It's just from the computer, so the computer's evil. I will not be writing love notes to it anytime soon. <laughs> You're not going to write love notes to the computer anytime <laughs> no. soon? Even though I do love my keyboard, the clicky sound that it makes, oh, it's like music to my soul. It's the perfect click. Perfect clickety click. <laughs> okay. All right. I am knitting and getting close to being finished with... The Chamomile Shawl by Julie Knits in Paris. I can't actually say her last name. Debru, Debro, Debro. Maybe. Good job. Something like that. You started this after our last yes. episode as well. I just, I found it and it was too perfect. Now it's knit in a, this sample is a pink and like a yellow, like a soft yellow and a minty color. So in typical Emily fashion, I did that only brighter. <laughs> so these are the colors I've been using and these are all hula hut yarns um, I bought them specifically to do something with them together and I was looking for patterns and when I saw this one it was just like kismet it was meant to be so this blue color oh, there everything's attached and messy right now because I'm in that phase where you've got multiple strands going and so on so this blue color is called Robin Egg. This is, and this is in their, her Maui sock base. So this Hula Hut yarns. I just love Kathy's yarn. Um, this one is 115 grams to 434 yards and it's 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon. The yellow is called Huckleberry Chuckle. And I got that, I got a skein of yes. that one too. Didn't you buy two? No, I bought one. Oh, okay. you just went back for that yeah. one. And then the pink is called Huckle, Huckleberry Trifle. That's funny because I didn't even know that those both had Huckleberry in them. I just bought them to go together. But anyway. The trifle. Huckleberry mm. Trifle. Anything, yeah. I can Just stop talking, don't talk, don't talk about food. <laughs> okay. So those colors, and this is what I have so far, and it's going to be really hard to show because it's just at that stage. But I'm getting close to being done here. Let's see what we can do. Thank you. Am I showing the front? Yes. I don't want to pull it off my needle here. I'm holding it's this all hand. bunched up on the needles right now, so you, you can't have. see. But this is where I am. So um, it's just such a fun, it's a like a half circle shawl, but it's built in these wedges. And then the wedges split. So like, see this wedge? Next section, there's two wedges that come off of that. And then in this section, two wedges come off of each one of those wedges. And then, you know, on down. So it's a really fun construction. But I am just about ready to break off the blue. And then I finish off with a big chevron border all in pink. So that's where I am. Um, in this picture, whatever is yellow is in my shawl actually blue, and whatever is blue in this picture is actually yellow. So those two are swi switched. Um, but anyway, it's coming along lovely, and it's going to be so fun and bright. This does not look like your colors, Emily. I, I know. I don't. I don't know <laughs> if this is going to go with anything I have, Deborah. <laughs> You know what? I watch other podcasters and follow other people on Instagram that have these gorgeous, just beautiful, soft colors. And I just yes. think that is so pretty. It's I want to so knit that. 
I would never wear it though because everything we wear is so bright and so bold. So I never get a chance really well, to knit if it. If I do knit something like that and I wear it, then I look, people it just looks dull on me because it's yeah. just it's not your personality. Mm -mm. So instead, I knit for other people. Yes. So I can knit with those beautiful colors. I just love I all the soft. I do too. This is this is as soft as it was getting, but it's still. I love it. It's still a. I really, yeah, really love this, that. This one's really fun. That's been in my favorites for like four years yeah. or something, and I've never knit it. So anyway, I'm excited about that shawl, that's and fun. I'm almost done. I have to show you something that's been in my favorites. Just a second. I have to reach all the way over. Okay. So the very first thing that I pinned oh, no, in Pinterest, right. it was after Emily, I had been watching her knit and she's been knitting all these shawls and I was thinking shawls I'm not really a shawl wearer but if I was what would I what would I wear what would I want to knit and the very first thing that I pinned because to me it was the ultimate knit for a shawl like <laughs> fantasy knit yes like I would never be able to accomplish that I'd never be able to do it but it's just so beautiful I had to pin it and that's the glam shell shawl by just a minute Madeline Brooklyn made in Brooklyn M A I D E N Brooklyn and I was scrolling through things and that came up again and I remembered that thinking oh I still love it and I was looking at the pattern and realized I can totally do this I can totally do it the the knit that I thought I could never do I'm starting and look at the yarn that I got for it do you recognize that? This one is from Yarn Brewery, and it is called the Eat Me, Drink Me. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be knitting that That's once I finish so my other projects that I have here that I'll show you. So I'm excited to start something that I so thought fun. I could never actually accomplish. Yeah. So. I have a lot of things that are like that. when Because I, I was on Ravelry as a crocheter. And it was being on Ravelry, plus being around a couple friends who could knit all kinds of amazing things. And I just didn't think I had knitting in me. I was, all, you know, just a crocheter. Mm -hmm. Just a crocheter. Like, I don't know why I said it that way. Crocheting is awesome. Well, meaning um, that that was the... One. That I only knew I could only do one or not both. Yeah. Anyway. But... Um, yeah, and so I, but then I started pinning all these daydream projects, and it's so funny because so looking back at them, they're like super basic things. I just thought they were so out of reach. They, it's because they look so impressive. Like when we talk about yeah. cables, how that looks mm -hmm. so impressive, but it's really not a very difficult right. skill. Well, and I acquire. didn't even dare at that point to pin anything that was lace. Or, you know, I mean, like, save anything that was lace or anything that was cabled or anything that was color work. The only things I were pinning was, like, stockinette, garter, stitch, like, top-down kids' sweaters. <laughs> but they just seemed like, I could make a sweater? What? You know? Yeah. So it's just, that's really fun to look back on. Ooh, so what is your daydream knit? The Ooh, thing that you I think loved... that you could not do. That thing that, that's the, out of reach. Or that you are hoping to someday achieve that would so. be really fun to hear comment on that below actually i'd love to read that should we have a giveaway we absolutely we're gonna do that do we want to do about it that? then below or do we want to do it in our ravelry group i think that we'll do that let's do that below okay let's do that below okay okay here we go here Let we me go pull up the information about that then it's time for another giveaway this one Surprise, it's Hula Hut yarn. <laughs> we love Kathy from Hula Hut. We do. We've talked about her multiple Quite a bit. times. This skein is a single skein or a single ply. Mm -hmm. And the name of this uh, this colorway is Magic Unicorn, and there is a very fun story that goes yes. with this. So Emily's gonna so tell Magic you. Unicorn is Kathy's friend Micah. And she's Magic Unicorn on Twitter. So she sells and donates finished crochet and knit items for charity all across the U.S. and the world. Veterans, homeless, cancer, animals, etc. 
Whatever she is needed for, she'll donate to it. She's done fundraisers for all kinds of people, and um, you can find her on Facebook as Magic Unicorn Cancer Crochet. So whenever Kathy sells a skein of this colorway, she gives proceeds or, um, to Micah. She gives her yarn so that she can um, make things and donate them to charity. So the proceeds she mm -hmm. uses to donate yarn. Yes. Okay. I, she says over. proceeds are given to Micah in yarn. Oh, okay. Okay. So I think she donates yarn to Micah and it, based on selling these. That colorway. Color, this colorway, which is named after her friend. So definitely go and pick some of this up too. But we're going to do a giveaway. And this has 434 yards and 115 grams. I really love the generous size of the skeins yeah. that Kathy uses. Um, so you could make a rain a shawl. You could. Or... Any, you know a million different things out of that so okay so down below you're going to comment what is your dream knit yes the knit that you are working towards that you think either is unattainable or that you are wanting to mm -hmm. learn the skills to we'll do. say knit or crochet your dream yeah, project yes. that you feel like is just out of reach maybe or you're building up to it yep okay I'll tell you one of the ones I'm building up to right now what? is Aria and I were just, now Aria's 19, going on a mission, no plans to get married in the near future, but you know me, I like to knit for the future. So um, we were talking about wedding shawls Oh. and those big, gorgeous, yes. full circle, full pie, lace, lace and yeah. you know, lace weight wedding shawls. And I just started thinking about it the other, I don't know, it was like a week ago or so, I thought, I wonder if Aria would even want something like this. Because if she does, I want to like, you know, I want a few years <laughs> to like plan and decide and knit it. And, you know, then they can just sit for however long. Anyway, so I asked her about it and she just was like, yes, please. In pink. Has to be pink, of course. <laughs> and so um, we kind of just had a fun time at like 1130 last night scrolling through looking at patterns. So I think that that's on, that's, that's coming up at some point. But it's definitely one of those things that I would never have thought I could knit when I was first starting. So. I love it. I love it. And you know that you can, absolutely. Not that you're working up towards the skills because you have that. I mean, yeah. after the flowers for Yvonne... Shawl. I can knit anything. <laughs> I know, honestly. As long as there's good instructions. I think yeah, that yeah. where I I, I, I wouldn't call myself an expert knitter for the fact that I don't feel really confident in, um, I like I couldn't just look at something necessarily and then reproduce it. Or, and I don't know, maybe that's Well, in some patterns that say like, construct the sleeve in the usual manner. Something like that. Right, like right. Like you need the instructions mm -hmm. for what? Or if it gives you like a really complicated lace pattern and then it says like continue increasing in pattern, like, but it doesn't give you the increases. Yeah, where you know, to do that? I've done a little bit of that, but not a ton. And so I feel like I need it to be kind of spelled out for me. But if it's, if it's got instructions, I can knit it. Yeah, so. Clear instructions. Yeah. Clear instructions are very important. Yeah. All right, my last work in progress is the Petals and Pico shawl that I've been working on. That spice so with yarn. Here's on the you. yarn I'm using. This was custom dyed for me by my friend Crystal. She's um, at Vintage Fairy LLC on Instagram. And it's got this Stellina, can you see? Kind of. Oh, it's so vibrant. It's so vibrant. So pretty. Okay, and here's a picture of the shawl. I mentioned before that this size, I wanted to knit this one. I thought it was medium. It's actually the large. Um, this is a free pattern if you subscribed for her newsletter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what I have. Here, I'm going to go this way. You ready? Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. We've got, look at the beading. Can you see the beading on that? All those little... It's really coming along. Ugh. Okay, and it has a provisional cast on at the beginning, so you can join it in the round. And so it's almost like an infinity scarf. Yeah, yeah. It says that it's a cowl. It really depends on if you're gonna make it. It just depends on mm -hmm. how, how you how you adapt it. But I added one. I think like six extra stitches on the side so it was slightly wider because mm -hmm. when I started it the first time it just was too narrow for what I thought and I think I figured out I have like 12 pattern repeats left oh my goodness you're so close okay. I'm like yeah I'm I'm really close I was actually working on this just non-stop 
Um, cause I think I've doubled it since the last time I showed. Yeah. You've done a lot. Yeah. But then I started on my daughter's shawl and I put that aside and I haven't mm -hmm. done anything on it. Otherwise it would be done today. It's so pretty. That's Can you okay. get closer and show the beading a little Here. closer? That's lovely. I'm excited to wear this. I have a dress that I'm going to be sewing that this will look beautiful <gasps> with. So Get it done and wear it on Mother's Day. Ooh, that would be lovely. That would be lovely. You've got time for that, maybe. All right. So that's, that's beautiful. last work in progress. I definitely need to bead something. Maybe I'll make a Raina shawl and bead it. So, yeah. And beading, if you haven't tried it before, it's actually really simple. It takes mm -hmm. more time because you have to stop where you're knitting and get the bead um, on your crochet hook, do something with it. You know, it's not, it's not hard at all. It just takes more mm -hmm. time. Um, but I recorded like a little four minute instructional video on how to add beads to your Very knitting. Very clear. So you can watch that. That's on this channel as well on YouTube mm -hmm. on Meanwhile at the Castle if you haven't seen that and you're interested in learning how to do it. One thing about beading is I was I watched your tutorial, which is awesome. I actually would put three beads on the shaft of my crochet hook. Oh just yeah. So I could pick up three. But then here's the kit, or you have to store it in your crochet hook in your cleavage. So it doesn't fall off. So that it stays upright. <laughs> so you can so pull it out. That would never work for me. <laughs> I love how you do all sorts of things with your breast pocket. <laughs> it's just for storage. <laughs> Mother Nature's built-in storage unit. Oh, for some. For some <laughs> others, you have to buy your storage unit or go without. <laughs> you can okay. buy the temporary version of the storage unit or the more permanent. Okay, version. and now we're moving on to... Oh, you ready? Okay, okay, calm down, okay. calm down. It's time for snippets, snippets from the past. <laughs> Have you missed it? We haven't done this in a long time. It has been like five months since we have done a snippets oh. from the past. Yes, I'm really happy to and be doing so this again. It is time for us to talk about entertaining. That's going to be our theme for the snippets from the past. So we have this really sweet Betty Crocker um, guide to easy entertaining from 1959. This is a vintage book that I have. It's not a reprint, so it's really kind of fun. It cost a dollar for I'm 1959. Dollar. A dollar? A dollar. <laughs> sorry, that's a YouTube thing that we saw. I don't even know what that's from. <laughs> there's a there's a lady, and I don't remember who it is, but she was doing this dollar store versus target dollar section comparison. Oh, and she's going back and forth and she kept holding something up and going, a dollar? A dollar? I think you guys just started saying that and then my kids started saying it and I got it from my Anyways. kids. Anyway. So this is how to have guests and enjoy them. <laughs> and I like the and enjoy them yes. part. <laughs> so entertaining back in the 1950s is, I would say, a little bit different than it is today. Yes. For most people, it's a lot more casual. Mm -hmm. But there were three things in here that I thought that I would share uh, with you from this. One of the things that they say is the best way to keep up with the Joneses is not to try. <laughs> so if you know about keeping up with the Joneses where you're always comparing yourself and trying to, um, trying to impress and improve and do what other people are doing and do it better, and, you know, don't even try. Just be yourself. Um, hospitality isn't a contest. It is sharing the best that you have. I like that. I, I like, like that, that too. I like that one a lot. So I'll share two more of the other things in a little bit. But with that, hospitality is sharing the best that you have. We wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between our grandmothers mm -hmm. are on both sides of our family and their um, entertaining style. Yes. So. so, and one of the fun things about this is I feel like we are very much like each of our grandmothers. So yes. Deborah is very much like our Grandma Gray, Grandmother Gray. Yep. And I am very much like Grandma Childs. So I'm going to share a bit about yes. my, our Grandmother Gray, and okay. you'll share about Grandma Perfect. Childs. So first of all, she is Grandmother. She liked to be called Grandmother. And I would agree with that. I like that. I like that term. And it's because it is more classic and and shows respect, I think. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, why. Well, I remember her term. saying that you don't call your mom ma, 
We never mm -hmm. like that was never a respectful thing. Would say, so would say mom or mother. Mm -hmm. But so my grandmother, our our grandmother, sorry, Gray, okay. <laughs> she loved to travel, yes, and she, did. she traveled all over the place. And when she would travel, I remember um, specifically if she went to any like Polynesian um, type of of places. She went to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. She went, anyways, she would go there and then also to China. She would go there. She took a million pictures and then mm -hmm. she would come home and try to bring the best of what she saw mm -hmm. there into her own home and to her entertaining. And so she had all sorts of really fun things that she would collect. She decorated like nobody's business for mm -hmm. her parties. I actually, um, inherited a lot of her decorations, but they didn't really make it, so I couldn't show you. Yeah. From China, she had all these little lanterns and things, but mm -hmm. and seashells that she would serve ice cream out of. Oh yeah. Um, anyways, just just beautiful. But for her, it was really important that she create a beautiful setting where um, everything matched and coordinated, everything and there matched. was a yeah. theme. And she was very adventurous in her cooking, and so she would try a lot of different things that way. Um, she liked to entertain in her backyard, and so she made sure that her yard was just pristinely cared for. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just it was just really important that she presented this beautiful package mm -hmm. for people, so that they would come and they could kind of escape maybe to the areas that she went to visit mm -hmm. and that she loved so much. Yeah, it was very magical. I mean, you know, she would have the lanterns up in her backyard, and there was they. I mean, in nineteen or, or I mean. I think starting in the 50s, they had this big hi-fi stereo and they managed to have it so that they could actually pipe that music to speakers on their back patio, which was pretty high tech. You it, know? it really was. You could put time. on a record in the house and it would play out in the back we, backyard. We had her record player for about yeah. five or six years. Um, before we just couldn't repair it any further and we listened to all of her Christmas records yeah. and Christmas morning it was so fun that's really fun yeah so I have some of her dishes that she would use I just have a couple she liked to like I said really create a presentation and so we have some of her little molds she used these as jello molds mm -hmm. um, because you know gelatin Things were very very popular mm -hmm. there were all sorts of interesting combinations of, <laughs> yes. of things that you could put in a mold so I've got a few different sets now I remember these but I, I was gonna say I remember these, these. I remember these, these little ring molds I've used these the hearts that I have greased mm -hmm. and and floured and, and I've made little cakes in these mm -hmm. but honestly I haven't used the other ones. I'd like I'd like to find some recipes and things that, that I could really do with fun. them. But I might be able to find some in here. I've got my grandmother's recipes right here. And this is so fun. I have both of her recipe boxes. And it's all of her handwriting and snippets that she has cut out of newspapers and things. And she's got some really interesting combinations of things. Tuna was a favorite. Oh yeah, tuna, tuna and, spam. and Spam. She likes spam. spam was a favorite. A lot of ice cream. Um, the ice cream I remember most was Tutti Frutti. Yes, homemade ice cream. It was a vanilla base um, ice mm -hmm. cream with, it wasn't a custard, um, but it was a mm -hmm. vanilla base that she added nuts. She always added nuts to mm -hmm. it. I had pecans. And she would put in maraschino mm -hmm. cherries, pineapple and chocolate chocolate Chips. that's right uh -huh. that was my favorite so chocolate pecans pineapple and cherries yep it's so good i cannot track down her original recipe i've been looking I have it. through here <gasps> you have it well yes i think so okay, if you have it we'll put it up on our website it's the one that used rennet really uh-huh okay all right oh uh -huh. yes i remember yeah okay so if you have that let's let's uh yep that up okay so I remember my grandmother making all sorts of interesting and very elaborate mm -hmm. types of things we always had homemade ice cream that was a big thing on that side of the family oh one of my favorite memories of course with grandma's entertaining are the bingo parties in the oh, summer oh you know here's the fun part the yeah. prizes 
Yes, that was the whole point was the prizes. I mean, we're not a gambling family in any way. So bingo, the way it worked is grandma and grandpa just had a whole bunch of prizes and they were all wrapped in white or brown paper and numbered. And then you would, we would all play bingo and it was the adults and the grandkids, everybody. And if you won, then you got to draw a number and then whatever number you got, you got a prize. So I got a roll of toilet paper one time. Uh -huh. That was really They liked exciting. useful gifts. So <laughs> they did. Case of Spam. There, case, was, there, was, there was very often symphony bars, chocolate uh -huh. bars were a favorite. Vienna sausages. Vienna, oh, yes. <laughs> Amelia loved those. Our sister loved those. Now, sometimes there were really fun things like little squirt guns or pop guns yeah. or and the little notebooks, And chocolates. also had pencils that had our, their glass company's mm -hmm. name on it, so gray glass. Um, so that was kind yeah. of fun to have that. But that was just, that was so much fun. A we few years so ago... It's we been a long kind of time revived. Ago. Well, we revived that. I guess it has been. It's we been bought like a bingo set for our ago, family, yeah. and we played that and had prizes where we, we had should do that. Things. We need to do that again. Yeah, we should. We need to do that. That was really fun. So let's hear about Grandma Child. All right, That's our mom's mom, Grandma yes. Child. So Grandma Child um, had a very different entertaining style. Both of our grandmothers wanted there to be people to feel welcome and invited and comfortable in their homes. The way that Grandma Gray did it, or Grandmother Gray did that, I always had to correct myself. I could never say Grandma, Grandmother Gray. That's funny. <laughs> I think it, but I would always say Grandma. But anyway. Um, the, the way that she did that is by creating this magic wonderland that she tried to make. Yeah. Well, the way that Grandma Childs did that was just feed you all the food she can and just be as relaxed as possible in, in the home. And she had a, things were very simple with her. Um, she, she always had food ready. You could stop in at Grandma's house at any time and she would suddenly have a meal there prepared for you. <laughs> Um, and I mean, her hobby was grocery shopping, it was. bargain grocery shopping. She didn't, she didn't like to drive. And in fact, she would never make left turns. <laughs> she would go really wide, crazy routes to avoid making left turns. So as soon as grandpa retired and was around, she stopped driving and grandpa would drive her around to all the grocery stores in the Valley to find the best grocery deals. So when I moved to where I live now, I lived like five blocks from their house and mm -hmm. so I would see him at the grocery store all the time and he'd just be sitting up at the front just yep. waiting. Grandpa's like, I'm just waiting for grandma. Usually <laughs> people watching or chatting to strangers and yep. grandma was looking for all the bargains. Yep. <laughs> um, but she just fed people and she that's how she showed her love. And um, But things were very comfortable like she didn't, things didn't usually match and things didn't usually come in any fancy containers they were just really delicious good presentation food. wasn't Super all artfully arranged it was very home it's like home style and it Is that, was yeah, all kind of delicious so good <laughs> um one of our favorite stories about grandma and her cooking was the gross gravy so i think we shared this before we may have heard yeah it. she she would always say things like that oh you're not gonna like that it's not very good you know I remember, at one yeah. time we were having a big family dinner and she said oh this gravy isn't good it this is this gravy is gross and one of our cousins, he was maybe four or five, and he said, hey, Grandma, could I have some more of that gross gravy? <laughs> and it just kind of stuck. But of course, everything that she made was delicious. It wasn't, there was nothing wrong with it. It was yummy. So um, she, she was more about like the quantity of love and the quantity of food than the presentation. And but we were at her house all the time. In fact, we spent a lot more time with our grandma Childs than we did with our grandmother Gray, just because it was a little bit more formal. And of course she lived informal. closer. She, grandma grandma Childs Child was more informal. Grandmother Gray was more formal. And um, grandma Childs also lived closer. So we just spent a lot of time with her. So some of our favorite um, things that she would make, um, there's two. She. I mean, she did the Sunday roast with the mashed potatoes and gravy like all the time. But um, two big things that I remember were rice pudding, and it's a baked custard based rice pudding that she made, I don't know, every week maybe? Probably. I mean, it was all the time. And then her homemade hot fudge. 
The hot fudge didn't go on the rice pudding. Those are two completely different <laughs> things. But I wouldn't discount it as maybe being good. <laughs> Haven't tried it. Both of our grandmothers always had ice cream in the freezer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, but Grandma Grace was more, or Grandma Grace was more likely to be some kind of delicious, you know, fancier variety, whereas Grandma Childs was more likely to be a bucket of vanilla ice cream, and then you make a hot fudge to go over it. And we have Grandma's hot fudge recipe mm -hmm. that we'll post on our yep. website, so we'll have the hot fudge recipe, and if you can find the, the I'll tutti for the ice, ice cream, cream. Yeah. then we'll have that on there. Yeah. So. One of the things I wanted to say is that I found an article several years ago. In fact, this article this article was republished in 2016, but I'm pretty sure I saw it before then. I'll put a link to it, to the one I found, but it's called In Praise of Scruffy Hospitality. And it talks a lot about the, the virtues of just being ourselves and inviting people into our reality instead of trying to always put on a show. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was comforting to me because that was already what I did, but I always felt guilty about the fact that I have mismatched chairs at my dining room mm -hmm. table and that, and not pretty ones, not like the cute, like on purpose mismatched <laughs> chairs, just ugly mismatched chairs. <laughs> and, um, you know, that there might be a pile of laundry waiting to be folded you know, somewhere and things like that. I always kind of felt like I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> so I just have embraced, this is who we are. Come and be with us. That your home doesn't have to be perfect before you can invite people mm -hmm. over. You don't have to go and remodel and redecorate and yeah. paint. And uh, anyways, I, I have mm -hmm. a couple of friends that I felt like I was comfortable enough with that my house could be a disaster and I only have half a meal, but I could call and say, you want to come over and what do you want to contribute? And we did that all the time. Yeah. And we got together and had the best time together for years before she moved. And it was just, it's nice to have, have those friends mm -hmm. that you feel comfortable with. But you have to be the one to often be the reach out and invite people in yeah. person. Yes. And it, that can be really, really intimidating or stressful. But I feel like after you've done it enough mm -hmm. times and you start to feel, you know, a lot more comfortable with the people if you do that often enough, it's just so enjoyable and bonding and yeah. just is so nice for your whole family. Um, one of the things in this book that I thought I would share that would kind of be a little bit of the difference between both of our grandmothers maybe. Mm -hmm. um, says, one of the best rules for a successful meal and a serene hostess is test any new recipe before trying it at a party so that you can vary seasonings to your taste, you know, make sure that it works. So um, my grandmother, Gray, she would definitely do that. Yes. I can see there always being a trial run of mm -hmm. every recipe beforehand so that it can be presented perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then with Grandma Childs. With Grandma Childs, I, I, I want to say she kind of did that already because... A party and entertaining wasn't anything different than what you would yeah. eat as a family anyway. I mean, there might there would be more of it, but she she wasn't necessarily an elaborate cook. So she it was like I said, simple home style kind of foods, um, the same things that her mom and her grandmother would have made, and um, didn't that require, we're still making. It didn't <laughs> require testing before and right sure it because was. it wasn't a fancy recipe. It was this is how she cooked. So so I had friends over one night for a, a dinner party and I love trying new foods and I love to be adventurous in my cooking and I found this recipe for a pasta that had um, this cheese sauce that was kind of similar to an alfredo and I thought oh well that sounds good I'm gonna try that so I got all the ingredients and I made it and it, everybody came in and you know right as I was finishing it and they sit down and I present the food and then I hadn't tried it yet and I was I think getting some more of the stuff together for the meal and everybody's just eating and I go to sit down and I took a bite and everybody had finished like half of their food and I was like what is this it's so disgusting I it was so gross I took the food away from everybody I said I can't believe you're eating that and they're like well it's fine it's fine I'm like no it's not fine I took it away and we ordered pizza. <laughs> so Why was it, it so was, bad? It was a blue cheese kind of Alfredo oh. sauce with a lot of blue cheese. 
So it really just tasted like stinky feet and mold. And it was gorgonzola sauce or yes, something like that. But it was a Ooh. large quantity. Now, done right, I think it could be <laughs> could work. <laughs> well, not that um, recipe, but that's an instance where maybe it's not so great to be adventurous and trying new <laughs> recipes with guests. Like, it's okay to try some things that are, you know, no fail kind of things where you know those ingredients mesh well together. <laughs> but blue cheese, uh, like, anyways, that's a tricky one. <laughs> Well, the thing I love about this, though, is that we all have our different styles, and I love the I love both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I loved the magic that Grandma Gray created, and I but I felt more at home with Grandmother Childs, Grandma Childs. But I think that you were maybe a little bit the other way, just because you resonate so much with Grandma. Well, I always Gray. felt um, at home with Grandma Childs and her mm -hmm. relaxed atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, because you knew it was okay to put your feet up on the couch and things like that. Where it's, it's, it's in and, and yeah, yeah, that was just fine. But mm -hmm. I really enjoy creating the mm -hmm. in, the in environment and presentation yeah. type thing as well. So I do it because for me it's the imagination of what right. can I create. You know, so I think that, like you said, they both have have. Um, positive qualities to them. Right. So and well, and I think you're really good too at being that casual entertainer too. I don't know that I could say I'm good at being the formal one, but I um, have things that I have gained. Like, for example, just the simple things of creating, trying to create an atmosphere or a mood. Mm -hmm. You know, we throw a big 4th of July party, uh, Independence Day party every year. And, um, you know, we, we try and have Let's, you know, lots of decorations and lighting and music and just little things like that that will add to the, the environment. Mm -hmm. But then it's a sit back, relax, and make yourself at home kind of a feeling once yeah, you get yeah. there, too. So, yeah, it's a good combination. That's fun. Fun to remember. All right. So, Emily, let's see. Oh, we're going to skip that. Okay, it's time for some shop news. All right. I just wanted to give you a little bit of shop news. Um, we're probably going to just have a segment like this. I did show a couple of the colorways that I have now from my new collection. This is from my Emma collection, based on Emma by Jane Austen, which I just love. And I love the Romola Garay version, which is the mini series version. And I love the Gwyneth Paltrow version. Especially because Jeremy Northam as Mr. On, Knightley. Oh, okay, okay. <sighs> I thought you were talking about the book. I'm like, there's not multiple versions of this I'm talking book. about the movies. Okay. The, t the shows. Because you've got to read it. Here's the thing about Emma. A lot of people don't like Emma. I don't understand why. Emma is a very wordy book. Because the way that Jane Austen describes all the characters in Emma is through their dialogue. And so there's a lot of talking. I love it. I love to listen to the way she unfolds who a person is by not just what they say, but how they say it, who they say it to, when they're talking, when they're silent. Um, I just, I love that so much. And I've heard a lot of people say that they like the character Emma the least of all of Jane Austen's heroines. And I think that maybe I like her so much because I identify with her so well because she's very flawed. She is like kind of stuck up at the beginning and thinks she knows it all, which of course, that's not an attractive characteristic to have. But the whole point is that she learns to not be that way. And mm -hmm. I love that. Anyway, here's the colorways. Now, I love them. on Instagram, I think that these two colors... It's right, so hard. They look ways. too much alike. Look so much alike, but they don't. They really yeah. not. So this one is this is Miss Woodhouse, it's and it's here. entirely speckled in yellow and pink. This is the Eltons, and it's speckled in orange and green and hot pink. Not a ton of hot pink, just a little bit, but they're they're speckled with different colors. So, well, let's see yeah. that. Here's the so yellow you can and try pink. And see kind of the variation there. Yeah. And here, I'm going to pull this ball band up so you can see kind of the orangey and green compared to the yellow and pink. So, anyway, these are really fun. I like um, 
And then, so yes, Miss Woodhouse. So that's Emma. Then the Eltons. Harriet Smith. Green with little flecks of a rose. Or that turquoise with a rose in it. And this is Elegant Jane Fairfax. I love the line, when pressed, I say she's elegant. <laughs> and my Mr. Knightley. Navy and a little bit of purple and occasionally little hints of kind of a, t a tan color in there. So those are the five colorways. Those are really for nice Emma. for spring right now. I love them. Those are I want really to do fun. a faded project. That's what I keep looking at. In fact, I have fade kits available in the shop in so regular sock and in an 8515 plump sock and in I have one sparkle kit available. Um, I also have my second band books monthly subscription up. So April's um, subscriptions have all been sent. I have a couple people who haven't received theirs yet because they're um, international customers and so they're still coming to them. So I have, I don't wanna show a picture yet. Um, but I will tell you, well, let's see. You can look at my Instagram if you want to see. I actually posted um, April's, um, but May is coming up. And I'm doing a collaboration with Amanda from Little Bitty Delights. She makes the most adorable polymer clay sweet treat I'm for this charms. One. Yeah. And so I bet you're wondering what a what band book could possibly go with a sweet treat that Amanda would make. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. <laughs> I dropped a stitch and then it went back like four rows. Oh no. Okay. Like for Did you get it? it? Did you grab it? Okay, good. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I am so close to finishing this. I'm just like, focus. <laughs> so anyway, that's the shop news. It's really fun, and I just have been so grateful for everybody who has been so wonderfully kind and supportive of my shop. Um, this has been a great blessing and continues to be, and I'm excited for what's coming. So I've got a lot all. of fire trucks coming through here. I know. It's been kind of crazy. <laughs> um I have one last thing. We wanted to have a shout out to a fun podcaster friend and her name is Sherry Iris and she is on YouTube. She has three episodes, I believe, oh, up right now. And I just thought it was kind of fun that she mentioned our podcast last time, which was really fun because I remember stumbling across her podcast like the day her first episode, oh, fun. like it just showed up in my feed and watched and I was like, oh, she is really delightful. And then out of the blue to hear her mention ours and I was giggling like, oh, that's so fun. You know, <laughs> when you find each other and you find friends, it was just really funny. That's and awesome. she's another really sweet and mellow, um, just the sweet and beautiful mellow ladies lady. seem to like us. And we're so weird. And we're just <laughs> not mellow. <laughs> we probably are pretty mellow actually but... compared to <laughs> Some what we could be. <laughs> I guess that's true. If we let it. Uh, <laughs> anyways, but she does a lot of sewing, embroidering, knitting, um, just a lot of the same things that I really love to do. And she is very skilled nice. at those. So it's fun to go. Oh, she also loves literature. And she, I Excuse think, me. would be somebody that you would... That we would, would connect. connect with a lot, you know, how much we love literature. <laughs> That's I so think fun. that, uh, who doesn't? I, I don't think, know. I think there's some people that don't, but in general, you can, you can always find somebody to connect with in that way. So, mm -hmm. that I is, think that is everything. That is the end. Um, go make sure to comment down below yes. for our giveaway about your dream knitting. Um, and join us in our Ravelry group and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you've seen and like and we love you all. And have a Thanks. beautiful spring Thank day. You. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.